we're on. Oh, this is a mutton for sure. Look at that. Textbook mutton snapper. Staying straight up and down, wanting to go back down to the reef. Looks like a nice one, huh? Yeah, feels decent. You ready, Brooke? I'm ready. Here, can you grab this? Yep. Oh yeah, it's a mutton. Looks like a nice one! Oh, oh yeah, that's, that's a, a keeper. keeper. That's a keeper. That's a keeper. <laughs> that's what we came Beauty. for. That is. I'm telling you right now, I'm saying 19 and a half inches. He is 20. He's almost, he's just at 20. Real pretty mutton snapper. We love to mutton snapper fish, especially Brooks dad. That's his favorite fish. One of mine too. And you know, we come out here a lot we catch so many undersized fish because recently they um, bumped up the regulations, the minimum size. This guy's keeper all day and they'll give you a run for your money. They like structure, they like coral heads. These fish like to hang around the reef. So as soon as you hook them, you got to yank them in the boat or they're going to get you in the reef. So that's why you really see us horsing them in. And uh, we're all fishing pretty beefy drags. Most of the time you guys see us um, snapper fishing, we're using ballyhoo. This is one of our favorite snapper baits, dead or alive. The one I just caught was on a uh, live valley here. When you use the dead ones, you tend to get a lot of pesky little fish pecking at it, but when you put out down live ones, they last a lot longer because all the reef fish have to kill it before they can eat it. And um, mutton snapper swims by, and we got mutton for dinner. You got him up. Man, every, I tell you what, every time we hook a fish on this side of the boat. It always wants to go towards this side for some reason. It's like there's a reef or a coral head or something big there that they want to go into. We're getting this one. I'm getting them now. Yeah, I'm ready to hold the rod. You got it? Looks awfully white. Oh yes, baby! Wow, beauty! Hold on, get, the, um, get a net or something, bro. A net? Grab a tail! Take it, Victor, take the net. There we go. Take the net. Come on, come on! <laughs> Forget the net. Forget oh. the net. Yeah, baby! That's a beauty! That's what I'm talking about. If I could sit out here and catch these all day, I would. Hold it this up. Is, Hold it up. This is one of the best fish out here. That's a nice one. Too. This right yeah. here is a yellow jack. Not to be confused with the Jack Cravel. Pound for pound, extremely good fighters and so amazingly good for uh, for the table. We love to catch these things and they're we always catch them as bycatch. You can't really target them. But man, I'm happy. You guys saw my face lit up when I saw that fish, didn't it? Yeah. I don't know what was going on with that net. I'll admit it, it was horrible. It was like inside out or something. You guys have seen us get broke off so yeah. many times today. Look at this. Yeah. This that's is ours. our deadline. Wow. That is, that's. He swallowed your hook and your bait and then there's another one hanging out of his mouth. Yep. And you know, he's not very big. He's only about six, seven pounds, but they throw down and all these fish always look for structure to try to break you off. And that's exactly what this yellow jack did. One of my favorite fish ever to eat and to have at the filet table. Like I said earlier, not to be confused with the Jack Crevel. Completely different looking meat and completely different fish. It's always a treat when we get these because we do not catch a ton of them out here. So we're just gonna knock the sides off real quick. Start right here, by the head, around the peck fin, down to the belly, tip of our knife, Going down the length of the fish, along the spine. In case you guys are wondering, this is an 8 inch Dexter uh, fillet knife. And you guys can save 20% off all Dexter knives if you guys use my code Landshark. I'm going to have it linked up here as well in the description box below. And wait till you guys see what this fish looks like. It is beautiful. Break through that backbone meat right there. Through these pin bones. 
They got a really big rib cage, you just got to kind of glide over. And then once we're on the other side of that backbone, just take the tip of our knife and just work on the way down. There you go. Check that out. Probably not what you were expecting to see coming from a jack. Sushi, a lot of people like this for sushi, sashimi. So let's skin it real quick. Start right here by the tail. As you guys see, we bled. We bled this yellow jack. And look at this. Although they have very good, nice meat on them, they still have a really big bloodline. And since we're going to use this fish for ceviche, and we're also going to use it for a stew type dish, I am going to remove the entire bloodline. Try to get underneath that red meat, because this is a big no-no for ceviche. Kind of just see where that bloodline wants to take us. I'm kind of removing it so that way I don't have to split the filet in half. Just kind of remove it from the top down just like that real thick bloodline you want to get rid of and then I also took the pin bones out right there so our yellow jack ready for the kitchen I'll catch you guys there hey guys I am beyond excited for today's video this is this catch and cook has been a long time in the making I got so much stuff going on but the very first thing we're starting with is I have some carrots onions celery and fennel actually diced up in this little stainless steel bowl. We're going to sweat these veggies over here in my brand new Dutch oven. I was so excited. I was like, Brooke, do you think it's too late to go to Target? She's like, I don't know, check the hours. So we made it there in the nick of time, got myself a Dutch oven. Tonight we're making bouillabaisse. I think that's how you pronounce it. I know there's so many different ways. It's like a French fish stew, perfect for yellow jackets. It's very firm. So we're gonna add all of these beautiful, colorful vegetables into our Dutch oven. And we are gonna let these sweat. And this bad boy is going to be completely full. I got my dad coming over, Brooke's family coming over, Brooke's grandma's already here, enjoying a little preview of the show. This stuff right here, you cannot buy this. This is like liquid gold. If you guys are following my second channel, I'm. I did a fish head soup, like a fish stock recipe, which is this guy right here. So this is fish stock that I've already made from a mutton snapper head, and it is so flavorful. First, first time ever making a fish stock, absolutely delicious. And since tonight's recipe is gonna have shrimp in it, I'm really trying to use every little bit of the animal. Uh, a subscriber actually, Yames, messaged me on Instagram. He goes, dude, you gotta make a shrimp stock. So I took about 200 shrimp, which are actually shrimp that we caught with Brooke, and she actually has the shrimping video on her channel. I'm gonna have it linked below. Um, we used all the shrimp shells, me and Brooke were peeling them, and I made this wonderful shrimp stock right here. If you guys have never made it, so easy, so flavorful, definitely be posting that on my second channel, cooking channel, linked below. So just wanted to show you guys my little stocks because I'm very excited. So now, another thing I'm really excited about, never have I ever roasted a red pepper. I did that in the oven for about 40 minutes at 400 degrees, and let me tell you, the flavor of a red pepper changes so much when you roast it, and I peeled the skin off. So we're gonna make, they say that you can't have boya bays without rui, so we're gonna make our own little homemade rui too. The first thing I'm gonna do is start with our garlic. This is two red bell peppers. We're gonna do all the, uh, softer stuff and then I actually have some bread this is the inside of some French bread because where you serve this your rui on top of your bread it's kind of like a, a spread mix this first now we can add some bread to thicken it up a little bit I'm gonna hold off on adding more garlic for now and we're also gonna add a little bit of cayenne and then olive oil Lots and lots of olive oil. You don't have to feel guilty because we're not making garlic bread. We're just making regular baked bread and then this is going to go right on top of it. You want to talk about flavor. Roasted red pepper. Mm-hmm. More olive oil. 
And more bread to this actually. And then maybe some acidity, maybe a little bit of lemon juice to kind of balance that out. Now that our veggies are sweated out, they've softened up a lot. This is about three, four cloves of garlic, minced. We're gonna work these in there for around 30 seconds just until we start smelling them. This is eight plum tomatoes, peeled and diced. Okay, we're also gonna add a little wine. I should have added it right before the tomatoes, but we're gonna add it now so that way we can sweat some of it out. So now I got the shrimp stock and the fish stock warming up in a separate pan or pot. And we're going to add it straight into the Dutch oven. Minced clams. I tried to get clams at the store at Publix, but they did not have clams. So we're going to have to settle for some clam juice and clams. So the only things, the only things we got left for our uh, bouillabaisse, base, we're gonna add a little vegeta. It's my secret right here. I like it because it's it's very salty. So I use it kind of instead of salt, especially for something like a soup. Some margarine, and then how about a little saffron? How about it? How about it? And that's it. How about how you're going to fit everything in there? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> how about that? How about that? Now we got a mission to make all of this seafood fit. We're going to start with our mussels. And the good thing about this type of dish is that the seafood you're putting in there is also going to flavor your broth. All right, so now we got the star of the show, or what should be the yellow jack, going into the bola base, or the bouillabaisse. base. And you need a real firm fish for this recipe because anytime you cook fish in liquid, it, it will tend to fall apart unless it's a firm textured fish. These are the 200 shrimp that we actually caught ourselves during the shrimp run. And last, we're gonna add our scallops. Just, look at that, that's just enough room. Mm -hmm. Just enough room. Yes. All right, so check this out, guys. I may have went a little overboard on the seafood part of this dish, but I don't think anyone has ever complained about that. Look at all that. This is a very rich, meaty stew. You guys ready? Voila! There she is. So I'm guessing that mostly everyone's gonna have multiple batches of this stuff. But look at that. Mussel, shrimp, yellow jack, scallop, a little bit of everything. Finish it off with a little fennel. You guys look around the table, empty bowls all the way around. That was five pounds of seafood all gone. It was seriously so good. If you have never tried a stew like this, if you have any firm fish, I highly recommend it. So flavorful, so healthy, barely any oil, and just absolutely delicious. So let's see what everyone else thinks. It was <laughs> chuck full of seafood. Man, you don't get that in a restaurant like that. There was, uh, what'd you cook, 200 shrimp? 200 shrimp. 200 shrimp. I mean, they were small, but you know, and we caught those, so that made it fun. But the scallops and the mussels and the fish, there was a lot of seafood in there. I had three bowlfuls, it was delicious. I think it was just outstanding. I had two bowls full, which I shouldn't have had. Now you know my stuff. But I couldn't help myself. It was so good. Um, I think I had four bowls. It was amazing. Everything in it was good. There were so many different kinds of seafood, but each one made it hard 
pick which was your favorite. It was so good. And the sauce for the bread was was really good. Um, I've never had anything like that as like a dipping sauce, but it was amazing. Yeah, I, I like very much. I'm not a big fan of uh, mussels or scallops, but uh, it stays great. Yeah, good. thank you. Well, <laughs> I thought we weren't gonna have enough food. <laughs> I was like, Vic, you're not making a pasta or something? Because normally when we make like a seafood dish, we have like pasta with the sauce. And he was like, no, Brooke, we're not gonna need it. And boy, we did not need it. There was so much seafood, it was incredible. And also when Victor was making this little orange sauce, I was like, why do we want a dipping sauce? Can't we just dip it in our juice? <laughs> and the sauce he made was so good. Um, but everything was really delicious, so good job, Vic. Yeah. And I'm sorry that I ever doubted anything <laughs> you were doing. <laughs> Look at this, we still got, we still have this much left over. Not much, but this big Dutch oven fed a lot of people very happy with it. I loved it too. Um, I think the fish was actually one of my favorite parts of this dish. Um, delicious. and. I can't wait to see what else you're gonna do with your new Dutch oven. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't believe none of us really commented on the fish, and I know a lot of people, especially in the catch and cook world on YouTube, you're like, why are you masking the fish? Why are you doing that? But if you guys have been following the channel for any period of time, we cook fish so many different ways. Stews, grilled, broiled, baked. I mean, stir fry every single way. And, you know, life's about spicing it up and this was a really good fish to do it with. So get a good, good big group of people, your family, all chip in for a bunch of seafood, have a good family meal like this. And I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in that next video. And also try not to stain your shirt everywhere. Yeah, don't wear a blue shirt when you're using tomatoes. <laughs> wear red. He got the memo. <laughs>